This video will highlight a brief outline of reproductive isolation mechanisms that help to keep species separate, such as breeding at different times of the year. We will look at species-specific courtship behavior, adaptation to different pollinators, infertile offspring, as well as prevention of fertilization. Let's begin by understanding what reproductive isolation means. Reproductive isolation or reproductive isolating barriers are factors. Factors that are preventing two species from producing viable or fertile offspring. Now children, we must remember that geographical isolation is not the only way that different populations of a species become reproductively isolated during evolution. There are other ways. Let's take a look at some of the ways in which populations are reproductively isolated. With the first way, which is breeding at different times of the year. Now, breeding at different times of the year is also known as yes seasonal isolation what happens it happens that when two similar species produce their gametes at different times right in many plants there is a very short flowering season so that cross-pollination cannot happen if a similar species flowers a few days earlier or later even amongst animals similar species of animals often breed during different seasons for example the rainbow trout is a fish that breeds in the springtime while the brown trout breeds in the autumn they have been imported into south africa and are often found in the same streams yet they do not normally breed together. For example, the Cape Parrot, which breeds from August to February, and the Grey-Headed Parrot, which breeds from April to August. Another example are the two species of eagles living in the same territory. The Tawny Eagle, which breeds in winter, and the Batalia, which breeds later in summer. What have we seen? We are seeing that these species are unable to breed because their mating occurs during different times of the year. So if one species reproduces in spring and the other in autumn, it is impossible for them to then crossbreed. Okay, some species may produce gay meats or spores or flowers at different times of the year, which prevents successful reproduction. Now, when we speak about different times, breeding at different times, it can also differ by hours or even seasons, right? As we've seen now, some animal populations are also active at night. And these are the nocturnal animals. Others are active during the day. And those are the diurnal animals. Now, some animals have very specific courtship behaviors that do not attract individuals of other species, even if they are very closely related species. Okay? And then this reduces the chances of different species reproducing with each other. Now, species-specific courtship behavior is an example of what we call behavioral isolation, right? Now, many animals' children have quite a complex courtship behavior, distinctive colors or different markings, right? And all of these things attracts a partner of the same species or it can stimulate the partner to produce eggs or sperm. Remember, small differences in behavior can mean that mating will not take place between different species. Because why? Because the partner does not respond. And why is that? Because courtship rituals 
are species specific, right? And only individuals of the same species are going to recognize those signals and will respond accordingly. Now this behavior, children, prevents crossbreeding and also ensures that no energy and effort is wasted on a potential mate of another species that cannot produce fertile offspring. For example, the courtship rituals of dogs and wolves are different and this prevents crossbreeding of these two species. Mating calls are different from one species to another. For example, the lions will roar, the frogs will croak, the birds will hum or sing. Mating dances are also different amongst the insects. Certain insects and vertebrates will secrete pheromones, right, which are scented chemicals that's going to attract the attention of its own species and not others. Some of the species have feather displays that they use during mating, for example, peacocks, etc. Moving on to another mechanism of reproductive isolation, and that is adaptation by plants to different pollinators. Now, flowers of the various plant species have different adaptations or different features that attract particular animals to visit flowers to receive and deposit pollen. Now, some of these features include the shape of the flower, the size of the flower, the color of the flower, its scent, and all of these features make them suitable for pollination by specific pollinators. For example, only by particular insects, particular birds, or by the wind. Now, these flowers are designed so that only one specific pollinator can get to the pollen, right? Example, a specific butterfly pollinates Disa uniflora, a type of flower. The structure of some insect pollinated flowers are shaped to match the mouth parts of specific pollinator species. For example, the tubular flowers with the narrow opening just wide and long enough for a pollinator's tongue to reach nectar will only attract certain pollinators that are able to reach the pollen with its long tongue. Flowers that are visited by flies can be foul smelling, right? So that it can attract insects by mimicking the smell of rotten meat. The dull colored flowers with strong, fruity or musty scents only open at night. For example, biobarbs, bananas or mangoes, right? Which have pollinators like bats. The African lily found in the succulent Karoo is pollinated by a nocturnal rodent at night. Now, this sturdy flower supports the pollinators and produces a strong yeasty odor and a lot of viscous nectar suitable for rodents to lap up easily. Now, insect pollinated flowers release pheromones. Why? To attract only specific pollinators. Each species has a specific sugar solution on the female stigma that will only stimulate germination of pollen grains of the same species. All of this ensures that these flowers are only receiving pollen from the same species. It prevents any cross breeding and increases its chances of successful fertilization. Moving on to infertile offspring. Now infertile offspring are created when Yes, when similar species are able to reproduce and they can have healthy offspring and those healthy offspring can grow to become adults. But the two sets of chromosomes in the cells of the offspring children are not exactly the same and they cannot line up to form correct bivalence during meiosis. What does this mean? This means that this hybrid now that was formed cannot produce gametes and is therefore sterile. For example, the mule that is produced from the cross between a female horse and a male donkey 
while the liga is produced from the cross between a male lion and a female tiger. Now both mules and ligers are sterile cross species hybrids. What have we realized? We have realized that even if the two different species mate and produce offspring that are vigorous, right? The species are still going to be reproductively isolated, right? If the hybrid offspring is sterile. So this is also an example of reproductive isolation. And finally, we move on to the prevention of fertilization. Right, now children, in some closely related species, right, you will find that fertilization of the different species is going to be prevented. Why? By the different species having different copulatory organs. Now, since the male organs do not fit into the female organs, the sperm cannot be transferred to the female. We call this mechanical isolation. And it happens when the shape of the male and the female genital organs makes it impossible for mating to take place between the species of the two populations that live in the same habitat. For example, even though different species of cockroaches may live in the same house and feed on the same material, they cannot mate with one another. The shape of the female reproductive structure is different in different species, so they cannot mate with the males of a different species. So the prevention of fertilization is also an example of reproductive isolation.